，做出了新的部署，提出了严格的要求。可以说呀、啊，这次。It is fair to say that the workshop has set a clear roadmap for our continued efforts in making progress in poverty alleviation and achieve the goal set. This meeting. Has issued the mobilization order to the whole party and the whole society, and sounded the clarion call for the final charge toward the goal of poverty alleviation, thus providing a fundamental guidance for fighting poverty at this critical stage. The meeting. Also reflects how the CPC Central Committee has effectively coordinated outbreak response, poverty alleviation, and socio-economic development. The workshop has also demonstrated the effective. Plans and arrangements by the CPC Central Committee on making progress in both poverty alleviation and outbreak response. It showcases our leaders' compassionate care for the people and a great sense of mission, and showcases CPC Central Committee's strong will and firm resolve. To deliver commitments. Following the workshop, the State Council Leading Group on Poverty Alleviation Development has made implementation arrangements, and our office has specified detailed measures and itemized tasks in our working lists. All provinces and Central government departments have made tremendous work, and are working hard on implementing the decisions made at the workshop. These efforts all aim to achieve solid progress and make greater progress in fully. Deliver all measures. We are fully confident that, with the strong leadership of the CPC Central Committee, with Comrade Xi Jinping at the core, and with personal care and commitment of General Secretary Xi, we will be able to secure a decisive victory against. The epidemic and against poverty, and we will realize all the tasks for poverty alleviation. Let me now give you an update on the latest progress and the next steps. You may know that the CPC. And the central government have, in 2015, set the clear targets and tasks on poverty alleviation. Specifically, by 2020, under the current criteria, all rural poor population and counties will be lifted out of poverty, and region-wide poverty will be resolved. After seven odd years of targeted relief efforts, especially the intensified alleviation over the past four years and more, China's poor population in rural areas under the current criteria have been reduced from a 98.99 million 
by the end of 2012 to 5.51 million by the end of 2019. And poor counties from 832 to 52 this year. We are approaching the goal of poverty alleviation. And the income for the poor also increased significantly. Their basic working and living conditions notably improved. Economic and social development in poor regions have accelerated and governance capacity in poverty alleviation has been strengthened considerably. These are the breakdowns of what we have achieved. Going forward, we will, following the arrangements by the CPC Central Committee and requirements made by General Secretary Xi, focus on the following areas. First, in active response to the impact of the epidemic, we will minimize such impact on poverty alleviation. We will never allow such a scenario that the epidemic affects our progress in attaining the poverty alleviation targets. In particular, we will support the poor in seeking jobs outside their hometowns. And we will focus on the sales of agricultural products and carry out consumption-driven alleviation and launch and restart re for relief programs at a faster pace so that such programs will be completed before the first second half of this year. And second, we will complete the remaining tasks with a focus on the 52 poor counties and the 1,113 villages with heavier tasks among the 2,707 poor villages. With intensified supervision and scrutiny, we will ensure all the existing poor counties and people are lifted out of poverty. Third, we will lock in what we have achieved with a priority to follow up efforts. Altogether, 30, 93 million poor population have been lifted out of poverty, but some progress has been quite vulnerable, and we will avert recurrence of poverty. We'll also prevent newly impoverished cases in the vulnerable groups. We will see to it that such efforts will be effectively delivered. For those who have been lifted out of poverty, we will continue to carry out industry-enabled employment-based and relocation alleviation. We will ensure good follow-up work. And for those vulnerable groups at high risk, we will establish accountability and pairing mechanisms to effectively uh, prevent poverty occurrence or new poverty cases. This year is the final year to attain the goal of eliminating extreme poverty. We have a number of challenges to overcome and with this new challenge posed by the COVID-19 outbreak, 
in play, I guess you may have keen interest in how to meet the targets. With that, I will gladly take your questions on poverty relief. Now the floor is open for questions. Please first identify yourself and your media affiliation before you raise questions. Thank you very much with CCTV. This year, we are about to complete the goals of poverty alleviation, and there's less than 300 days left. But still, we are facing with new challenges posed by the COVID-19 outbreak. What are the uh, impact of the uh, COVID-19 outbreak? And some are worried that we may not finish the uh, tasks on schedule. What is your take on that? Yes, when we had the meeting, it's a 300-day countdown, and now it's uh, 294 days left. It's not about the uh, on which day we finish the task, but still we have a deadline, and we must achieve the ta complete the tasks before the deadline. And there are severe impact on poverty alleviation from COVID-19 outbreak. But still, we are confident that the uh, outbreak will not affect our work and our determination in finishing those tasks. But still, we have to work hard, and we remain committed to those poverty alleviation tasks, and we need to make further efforts. There are quite a number of impact from the outbreak. First, because of some of the uh, control measures, there are um, impacts on the logistics as well as the uh, flow of population. For example, many of the poor families, they used to depend on the incomes from working outside their villages and counties, but now things have changed and it's difficult for them to find jobs, to move outside and find jobs. Last year, around 2.7 million people sought works outside. But by the 6th of March this year, only 1.4 million people moved outside, only accounting for 52% of last year's number. The number is quite smaller than the previous numbers, but now as things are moving toward, uh, as things are moving in a positive direction in epidemic control, the government has taken measures to enable more migrant workers to move outside to find jobs. Last week, three million more rural migrant workers have was able to move outside to find jobs, and we are still accelerating this job. And second is about the sales of poverty alleviation products. Indeed, as you've mentioned, there have been some negative impacts. We see uh, the negative impact on tourism during the Spring Festival, and although usually spring is not the best season for the sales of agro, uh, agro products, but some of the vegetables and flowers from Yunnan province, their sales have been affected. And this year, because of bad logistics, billions have lost in the sales of flowers from Yunnan province, but different uh, governments at different levels are taking measures to mitigate the uh, impact. And thirdly, it's about the uh, poverty alleviation projects. Many of the uh, projects have a direct bearing on the uh, basic living conditions, including uh, safe water and trans uh, transportation to local people. And by last week, one-third of those projects have been started. 
and uh, we are about to accelerate the resumption of all those projects. The impact might be huge, but as we are taking measures, we aim to minimize all the uh, possible negative impact, and we are trying to gain back the time that we have lost. Maybe, though some of the projects might be hindered, we can find new projects to help them. As we have finished the uh, main tasks, we still have confidence that we will be able to finish all the tasks in poverty alleviation. Next question. With Kyoto News. What are the current standards in poverty alleviation? Can you specify on the current standards? Is it about the annual income or something else? Are we going to change those standards this year? As for the standards we are using in China, it's a quite comprehensive one. So we have many three aspects. First is about income. The national standard is 2,300 yuan. And after adjustment, it's about uh, 3,000 yuan, and by the end of this year, it's about to be lifted to 4,000 yuan annually. It's about the income. But still some background information. According to the information that we've gathered from the registered poor, the uh, per capita income has reached, has been above 9,000 yuan. And those that have not been registered is around 6,000 yuan. So although income is one of the standards, it's not the only standard. So we have other standards, that is, we need to ensure their basic access to food and clothing. So as we have ensured their basic income and their access to food and clothing, we need to guarantee further access. Still, we might have some children that are not able to attend school, but the number is quite few. And then we need to guarantee their access to medical and health care service. So every village in China now have their village clinics so people can have access to proper medical service. And we have different kind of medical insurances and supporting systems. So we have a comprehensive, quite comprehensive network for medical service for the people. That's about uh, compulsory education and medical service. And then we need to ensure their access to basic housing. Over the years, over 8 million poor people have been able to have proper housing, and we are still trying to provide more. And then we are trying to solve the problems, including access to safety water, drinking water. This is also another priority. Now in China, about 150,000 people are still uh, do not have access to uh, safe drinking water. But it's a seasonal problem. But as we have spotted this issue, we will try to solve it. In different places, we may have encountered 
different problem. For example, some children they are not willing to go to school, so we need to persuade them and their parents to send them to school. So we have different、uh, resolutions to different problems. And as I've said, we have a comprehensive system of networks. Despite the impact of the epidemic, we will not change the standards this year. We will not lower or raise those standards. Thank you. From paper, over ninety million people have been lifted out of poverty. Well, let me say that, as I just elaborated, the remaining poor people is about several million, and over ninety-three million have been lifted out of poverty. How can we ensure steady and stable progress while cementing the past achievements? This is a focus of our work, and we're making unwavering efforts. For example, the recurrence of poverty every year is decreasing gradually. In 2017, the number of recurrence cases is 600,000, and In 2017, it's 200,000. So 600,000 it was in 2016, and in 2018, it's only tens of thousands. And last year, only thousands of people were returned to poverty. So. The recurrence is decreasing gradually. Still, we take it as a priority. How can we avert recurrence? Fundamentally, I think we need to focus on the following three areas. First, on industrial development. It takes time to nurture a prosperous industry, but. We need to integrate such efforts into ensuring prosperity in rural areas. And second, it's about poor people seeking jobs outside their hometowns, or rural migrant workers represent a salient feature of China's social development. We should provide more policy support for them to. Secure a good job and get steady income. And third, about relocation alleviation, covering over nine point six million poor people. At the same time, we have also relocated about five million non-poor population in central and western China, and. Such efforts will also be combined with industry-driven and employment-based alleviation efforts. Moreover, we have already established the mechanism, a pairing scheme, to prevent recurrence, and we will also. Register those met the meet the criteria, and we will provide support as needed instead of only after they get registered as the poor. So it's preemptive and targeted alleviation. Thank you. From CRI,、um, the agricultural 
radio. And the ban on any trade of wildlife has helped with outbreak response. But in some poor regions, trade or uh, farming of certain animals were part of their source of income. So for these regions, what support policies will be provided and such a what such a what impact will such a ban bring on poverty alleviation? There has always been laws and regulations banning the raise farming sales and eating wild animals and recently such a law has been reaffirmed we understand that in some parts of our country there were cases some animals were raised but they were far from being a pillar industry in these areas hundreds of thousands of uh, yuan may have been invested in such sectors we don't have any specific statistics at hand but since the new decision was adopted, relevant departments are working on the detailed catalogue specifying the uh, animals that cannot be raised. The work is still in the line. And we will see to it that all the laws, regulations, and the new decision are fully delivered. And all the illegal or unlawful acts are addressed and corrected immediately. If losses are incurred because of such implementation, then we will provide support to encourage them to engage in other sectors. And in a word, I don't think such a ban or this, the new decision will have a big impact on poverty alleviation. You can rest assured. Thank you. Now there are still 52 poor counties and many poor population and it's only 10, less than 10 months left. How can we ensure that we can finish all the tasks? For the remaining 52 counties and uh, 2,707 villages, and the 5.5 million poor people, they are the main focus of this year's job. We have a work plan that has been pursued at different stages. At first, there was an overall plan, and then we have focused our efforts in some, the, in some of the most difficult areas back in 2017. On the 23rd of June, Secretary General Xi Jinping held a seminar in Shanxi about targeted poverty alleviation in those deeply impoverished for those deeply impoverished areas. We have identified some key areas including one hundred and sixty nine counties and we have stepped up our efforts. So as a result, last year there was only 52 counties, over 2,000 villages, and over 
five million people left. And for those remaining population, we've identified 1,113 villages. That should be the uh, focus of our work. We will have a village-specific measures for each and different villages, and we will send experts from the national level. And we have identified uh, our works to different provinces. Seven provinces are involved in this work, and we have asked different provinces to see to it that Every village will have a specific and tailored program so that they can complete the uh, task as scheduled. In 2015, those six key regions have 5.32 million poor population. And after the seminar in, held in Shanxi by Secretary General Xi, we rolled out a implementation plan for those impoverished regions, and two years have gone since we implement the plan, and we have finished over 85% of the three-year plan. We used two years and finished 55% of the three-year plan, and 95% of the funds have already been allocated to those poverty alleviation programs. In the past, the uh, poverty headcount ratio was 25.5%, and by the end of 2018, sorry, 2017, the time when we rolled out the plan, three-year plan, poor population was one72 million, and the uh, poverty headcount ratio was dropped by a large margin. Over the uh, four years between 2013 to 2017, the uh, headcount ratio was dropped by 11 percentage point, points. As now we are focusing our efforts on the, 20, on the 52 counties and those over 1,000 villages, we are confident that we will finish all the uh, works and tasks by the end of this year. Phoenix News. Now the uh, outbreak has a huge impact on our economic development. Do we have some estimations about whether the uh, outbreak will drag some people back to poverty? And some short-term plans are made to provide jobs to poor population. What are the long-term plans in this regard? As for the relapse into poverty, we have been focusing on this um, problem over the years, and the uh, numbers have been dropping over the years. We have identified some of the uh, vulnerable groups, and we have this number around 2 million people are at high risk of a relapse, and about nearly 3 million people are at high risk of sliding to poverty. And you've mentioned we have some short-term plans. We've provided some jobs at different industries to help those poor population. This has been a exercise nationwide, during, especially during the epidemic, some of the uh, government projects are provided especially to the poor population. So with a job, they can have some income. This practice has been carried out nationwide, and we will continue with this practice. But still at the same time, we will improve such a practice 
some of the、uh, localities they are just giving out those、uh, job opportunities, but this will not be a really good practice because we should base such practice on the needs, on the actual needs, and those who have received the jobs they need to do the actual work. I think China is the only country in the world that is using solar power stations to do poverty alleviation. Over the years, we have established tens of dozens of thousands of、uh, solar power stations at different villages, and、uh, the income will go to the、uh, village communities. At the first, at first. Some of the villages they just give the money to the people, what they've earned from those stations to the people. But now they're trying to provide jobs to the poor population, especially to those vulnerable people, the old aged or those with illness. And with a job, they can have a steady income. And、the jobs might be a cleaning job or other kinds of jobs, and such a practice should be accepted to by more localities. We're encouraging more places to do this, but we need to standardize our work, and we. Should ensure that those favorable policies will not be taken advantage of by some people. Well, we know that education is important means to prevent generation、uh, tr transmission of the poverty cases. And I'm with Education TV Station. How can we ensure education can play its due role in help with the poverty alleviation efforts? Well, we know that in raising people's educational and skill skills, education plays a crucial role in prevent poverty. And this is a consensus. Think first and foremost. We need to translate such consensus into specific actions that suit China's conditions. So, what's most important is that we should ensure the quality of compulsory education. All the kids should have access to the nine-year compulsory education, and the quality of such education should be raised steadily. And this is part of the poverty alleviation criteria we have set. And next point. Is that we will work proactively to develop vocational education, higher education, and preschool education. For those junior high school students who have failed to get into the senior high school. And those senior high school students who have failed to get enrolled in colleges, we will give them more support, specifically subsidies, about three thousand yuan, to receive skill education so that they can be employed as a new type of rural migrant workers, and. This is a priority of our work, and such efforts work. We will also support higher education in poor regions, 
so that these poor regions can produce more college graduates. And we prioritize college enrollment from poor regions. There are areas where in history they didn't have produced any college graduates, but now we have realized that all the poor regions have produced college graduates. As I said, we want to raise the quality of compulsory education. And for those ethnic group regions, many cannot speak Mandarin. And we provide support for them to carry out Mandarin language education. We are currently working with the Ministry of Education to carry out a program in Liangshan in Sichuan province, a pilot program of Mandarin language education in preschools. And after one year of implementation, effective results have been produced. For kids six to four to six years old, they can all speak fluent Mandarin. And those who have received such Mandarin language education perform better than those who haven't in primary school. And another area high on agenda is raising their awareness. Apart from textbook education, we want to change their mindset in practice personal hygiene, in disease prevention and preparedness, in working hard and facing difficulties in life head on. We believe that, that such awareness education can also help with poverty alleviation. We will ensure that education will serve our long-term interests. And next question, please. I'm with Pop Poverty Alleviation Magazine. As we understand, our office has established a mechanism of designated officials for supervision and scrutiny. Uh, what has been achieved and what is the plan for this year's supervision work? Poverty alleviation is a great and challenging task. Without integrity and competence, we cannot accomplish the tasks. So the style of work and integrity of our officers are high on the mind of General Secretary Xi. So in our work, we focus on the actual delivery and we are result oriented in our work and we want to effectively lessen the burdens on community level officials and in our inspection tours we never or seldom make any prior notice we don't give much paperwork requirement what we do is field trips and ascertain the realities on the ground by listening to uh, the villagers and the poor people in relevant counties. There are not many paperwork requirements like filling out the forms, but actually uh, in actual work in certain areas, they are still asking for forms. 
since the outbreak started in the fourth day of the Lunar Chinese New Year, we have activated the outbreak response in poverty alleviation. So we were not able to visit the villages due to the epidemic. We give instructions and guidance through other means. And this is part of our way to change our work style. And we will see to it that such work will deliver positive results. Otherwise, there won't be further progress in poverty alleviation on the whole. Economic Herald from Hong Kong. Most of the places have finished their works in poverty alleviation. Somehow, the uh, local officials may feel a uh, tendency to relax. The finish of those tasks by the end of this year, does, does the fin completion of the tasks mean that we can finish all those poverty alleviation work? Yes, it's a problem. As we have lifted more population out of poverty, and more counties have now graduated from poverty. There are a number of officials, including those working at the community level, thinks that now is the time to, now might be the time to relax. But there are just a few number of people that are thinking about that back in 2018, Secretary General Xi has asked that there should be no relaxation and no negligence. President Xi always stressed that the last mile is the most important. And he has, on different occasions, stressed on the importance of this issue. So I believe, in general, most of our officials working at poverty alleviation are not thinking in that way. Let me give you some statistics. This year, for those that are working at poor villages, 99% of them have already arrived at their designated villages, and 97% of the resident officials have already arrived in their designated villages or their posts. What are they supposed to do? First, epidemic response. And then they will see to it that all the tasks of poverty alleviation will be completed by the end of this year. Though there might be some individuals who feel like the tendency of relaxation, but the majority of our officials are not feeling so. We are still have a high sense of urgency. And then on your second question, we say this year is the crucial year to finish the task of poverty alleviation. So we call it a critical battle. What's the purpose of this battle? It's to address the issue of extreme poverty, which means that the lack of access to basic living conditions, clothing and food, because over thousands of years, China has always faced uh, such issue of extreme poverty and never have we addressed this issue. But the completion of the task of this year does not mean that there will never be poverty in China. Because after addressing extreme poverty, we will still have poverty. We will still have difference of income, and we will still have to face the uh, task of achieving prosperity for all. So after finishing this year's job, after we have addressed extreme poverty, we need to work on relative poverty, which means that the disparity of uh, income and wealth among different groups of people. And for this new issue, we will have new approach. So this battle 
of eradicating extreme poverty might be different with our work in addressing relative poverty, but still our works in poverty alleviation will not end. We will continue with this job. Xinhua News Agency. You've mentioned there have been many measures that has been taken in the uh, 52 counties. Do we have new plans on the timetable and other aspects of poverty alleviation as we are entering the final stage of poverty alleviation? What is the national plan on the uh, census and other aspects in gathering statistics? We will not change the standards of uh, graduation from poverty. So we have this general uh, comprehensive uh, standards, including income and their access to basic living conditions. And the overall timetable will not be changed. For some specific areas, including the Liangshan Prefecture, the Nujiang Prefecture, uh, maybe we will postpone the uh, timetable for the uh, relocation of poor population, but still all the tasks will be finished by the end of this year. And in general and nationwide, the timetable will not be changed. The plan might be adjusted in different localities, maybe delayed by one or two months. And we also have the plan to check the uh, results of our work in poverty alleviation to see whether we have genuinely lifted the people out of poverty. We have this plan to conduct a nationwide consensus in the uh, last half of this year, and it will, it will be finished by the early half of next year. Last question, please. Thank you. Now, over some time, some private institutions and private business people have been actively engaged in poverty alleviation. How would you comment on Hong Kong's contribution to mainland's poverty alleviation? Well, as you said, Hong Kong has close links with the mainland, and such links are getting closer in poverty alleviation on the mainland. The SAR government and social organizations, business people, and people from all walks of life have made tremendous work. It's fair to say that they have played positive roles. The Hong Kong SAR government has paired up with Nanjiang County of Sichuan Province. Back in 2013, there are 70 to 80,000 poor people. And in 2018, the county was lifted out of poverty. And in tw last year, all the poor people in that county were lifted out of poverty. Such achievement could not have been made without the support of the Hong Kong SAR government. Now, the social organizations and the general public in Hong Kong have also contributed a lot. There is a welfare program from Hong Kong who have been engaged in poverty alleviation in rural areas on the mainland. In particular, in 
cattle farming. And such a program has benefited 20,000 farmers in six provinces in, on the mainland. And many of the farmers were among the poor population. And every time disasters, natural disaster hit the mainland, including the outbreak of COVID-19 this time, the business people and the general public across sectors have extended a helping hand and give us generous support. We are grateful to their contribution and we'll never forget their contribution. Thank you for coming. With that, we conclude the press briefing.